How's it going everybody? My name is 100 Blades of Death. Um, so today I'm going to be doing a real quick video about GUI interface in the Warcraft 3 World Editor. Uh, I'm not sure how many people might really need this or are interested in it, but that's the plan anyways. Uh, I know I like making Warcraft 3 maps and stuff, and I know a lot of other people who do, so I decided, hey, why the hell not? I'll see what I can do about it. <laughs> so some people ask me how they can do things. So I'm going to do start off with simply GUI stuff, and then maybe later I'll do some jazz stuff for people if they are interested in it. So if there's a certain thing you want me to cover, just let me know, and I'll see about making a video about it. So real quick, uh, we're going to just do a respawn thing. So right here we've got a bunch of nice units and some murlocs. Uh, so if they kill, if you killed them right now they would just die and they would never come back but let's say we want an infinite amount of murlocs <laughs> that will just keep respawning over and over again. So we'll start off with our trigger editor. So I already made the two of them because uh, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. But we're going to start off with this one. I already have this one disabled. Uh, this is the most like pretty much the most simple version you could do. And what it does is, whenever a unit dies, you create an event. So whenever a unit owned by neutral hostile dies, uh, you will wait five seconds, and then it will create one unit of the unit that died for neutral hostile at the position of where it died. So pretty much what this does is that whenever a unit dies, so if this murloc dies and it was killed over here, it will spawn over to the right. Um, I can demonstrate this real quick. We can just test the map. So we'll open this up, load in, and all right. So here we are. So we got uh, all our units, and let's lure them over here real quick with the with the rangers. So we'll see them. They all they all came over. So originally they spawned over to the over to the left, right? But if we kill them and we wait five seconds. Well, then suddenly, our murlocs start respawning where they died. See? So this is useful if you want just, uh, if you just want units that will respawn wherever they die. But let's say you don't want that, and you want them to respawn where they were originally placed. So for things like RPGs and such, um, we'll open up our trigger editor again, and we'll disable this one, and we'll go over there here. Now this is far more complex. It requires two things. Uh, so it's not as clean as doing it in Jazz or something, but this is just simply using GUI stuff. Uh, so first off, we need to initialize it. So this is on map initialization, and you need to create a variable. Now to do this, you select set variable, uh, set. And here you would normally not have anything because there wouldn't be any variables yet, but you'll edit variables, and you'd have to press this and it will create a variable and you'll want to call it temp integer or whatever you want to call it it's just a, it's just something that will hold the integer for a loop um, if you understand basic uh, programming you know what a loop is uh, and if you don't a loop is just it's like the word itself it's something that continues over and over again it doesn't end really um, but uh, in programming a loop does have an end it's once it reaches a function's end so for this specifically, we want to create an input, uh, a temp integer and variable type of integer. So, and then everything else can be the same. The same. So, you exit this. Close that. You would select temp integer, and you want to select its value as zero, because you want it to initialize as being zero. And then you want to select pick unit, and pick every unit in units in playable map area owned by neutral hostile. So this is just this function right here. Pick units in your unit group and units in playable map area and region owned by player. So it's that one. Units in playable map owner play owned by it'll do neutral hostile. So that'll give you this and do actions. And that'll make a second thing right here which is the loop actions. And this is where you need two more variables. One is called set graveyard points one is called set uh, graveyard uh, units. 
So again, same thing, you go into this, edit variables, and you create points. So points is going to be variable type of point, easy stuff. Um, except this time you're going to check the array box and create the size of 256. So this will have 256 slots, array spots, pretty much. Super useful. And you're gonna, you can create the other one right now if you want. Um, this will be called graveyard units. Uh, and the variable type will be unit type. This will, st and it's another array of 256 size. Now this will store the unit type of the unit who died. Uh, this is very useful because you need the you don't want the it to not store the unit type and have it just keep respawning uh, the same the unit that uh, died beforehand. No, without this it wouldn't work. Um, so once you have that, okay, so you can cancel out of this, uh, and then you need to select its variable. So ori originally it would be put to this value type, but swap it to variable and make it temp temp integer, and then this you need to make it the position of picked unit. So it's just unit position of unit. Instead of triggering, select uh, where, wherever picked unit is on this. That's right at the top, picked unit, easy. Okay, so exit out of that. So that's that one. And it, you do the exact same thing with this one, except it's graveyard units, temp integer, and now it's unit type of picked unit instead. Okay, unit type of picked unit. So as long as you have the right variables, this will work fine. And then next up you would create unit, set the custom value of picked unit to temp integer. So what this is doing is the picked unit is getting uh, put to temp integer. So whatever, because integer is what you're using to because this integer continues to go up up to 256 because of this loop so whatever you've selected as uh, so whatever the unit say this murloc right over here got selected as integer 3 right out of 4 because there's 4 monsters here so integer 3 would be that guy so the picked unit integer in this instance would be 3 and then set temp integer to temp integer plus one. So it's just a big loop, and it'll keep going over and over again. Um, realistically, you don't have to understand this part that much. Um, and you just know that once you have this part, you're pretty much good to go for respawn. You create the second part of respawn. So this will revive anything as is in the original starting spot, right? So unit a unit owned by neutral hostile dies okay it's pretty much the same as this right but this time wait five seconds you have this big ass thing it's exactly the same as in our first one except you have variables replaced so create one of graveyard units custom value of dying unit for neutral hostile at graveyard point custom value of dying unit so you just select graveyard units as a variable and then this you select unit custom value of unit and you select event response dying unit and then it's of new, uh, for neutral hostile and the exact same thing select variable graveyard points this va value will pick up and you go unit custom value of unit and then you select dying unit facing default building degrees. You can change this if you want. You can make it uh, face like a certain way or something if you need things to, if you want everything to be a certain way. But that it doesn't really matter. Um, and so this one, play. Load up real quick. Okay, so now for this one, if I were to take my rangers and shoot these guys and say lure them all the way over to my footmen and then kill these guys oh I hope I changed the timer yeah so see so they'll, they'll after five seconds they'll respawn all the way over here where they were originally spawned and they will continue to do that over and over again see so this is really useful if you need a, a static respawn system 
something I'd use in RPGs and stuff, for instance, like when I've worked on RPGs, this is the kind of respawn system I'd use for that. Uh, so there's that. Oh, oopsies, Alt F4. So this is pretty much, those are like the two most basic like versions in terms of uh, the, the GUI that you can do. Uh, I really like using this one if I need to ever have a bunch of things respawn all over our map. Um, it's a really nice one. Pretty simple to do. Doesn't take too long once you figure out how to do it. And like I said, you just need to create three variables. Nothing hard. Um, so if there's any, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if there's any specific things you want me to do in GUI or attempt to do, some things are practically impossible to do in GUI, like a, a save load system. That thing takes god awful forever. That's more or less something you want to do in Jazz. Um, but if there's anything specifically you want me to do, or show you guys, or even just like making maps in general, like I used to do, uh, since I'm going to start doing tutorials and simple things on GUIs again, um, just let me know, and I can do that for you guys. Uh, so anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to comment or send me a PM. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and good luck with making maps yourself.